Hello everybody, welcome to Let's Play Dominus Galaxia, the beta, the closed beta. With me, Get Dave, this is a game that was very recently, very narrowly, kicked on Kickstarter. And it's a good thing. Do you like 4X games? I've got very, very good news. Oh, a little UV artifact. Alright. We've got a lot of galaxy shapes. The interesting thing is because they're going to be randomly distributed, some of the goofy distributions actually work out kind of nicely. Let's try the X. Ah, you know what? Bullseye might work out nicely. We'll just do a cool 50 stars. Average. Uh, you know what? I guess we'll try Veteran and we'll see if they can beat me up. There's a ton of customization options to the game. I'm not gonna get into them. You might think like star lanes are adjustable. That's a it's a big deal. And you might think, oh, that's not that many options, Dave. There's um. There's a text modding system for the game. We're not gonna get into. Later, get Dave on honorific God Emperor. All right. And we're going to be yellow. That's my favorite company, or favorite color. What are you going to do about it? Obviously, my favorite company would be my own. There's only a couple races implemented. Although I would think that would be maybe some money required for an artist, but relatively easy to implement. All right, we start with a decent count of ships. And if you're familiar with Master of Orion 1, then this will look very familiar to you. Much like Mu-1, the starting tree is randomized. So the different texts we're going to be able to get, you know what, we can start by having everyone scout. You know what? Starline density right now is so high. Oh, I should have prioritized the yellow one. I guess it doesn't matter. Ultra poor. Ah, that's a bit of a bummer. And the yellow stars, so typically the yellow stars have the best, you know, planet chances. Kind of a bummer. All right, let's send some people. You don't need a colony ship in this one. You just don't worry about infrastructure. You just send those people over. It's whatever they have in their drawers. So logistics means lots of different things. Oh, by the way, I, I have a stream of this game up on the channel that I did actually just a couple days ago uh, with the developer. Our, our boy Jeff is in the chat. And so that's some good content. All right, we're gonna run away. The Neil deGrasse system. It says hostile, we can't... <sighs> we can't colonize it. If it says ultra poor, we barely want to. But I mean, Callias is a pretty good system. If we group up all of our forces, There we go. Oh man, well, it's just the Corvette. They're not gonna do anything. Um, if we group up all of our forces, we should be able to do something. And early on, we're gonna be using a pretty light touch. 
All right, everybody's grouped up. So Corvettes are barely ships. That's your uh, your Volkswagen Beetle of starships, and they get all the way up to um, the Death Star. I'm exaggerating a bit, but Corvettes are so small, you only really need to worry about them in large, large numbers. We should be decent. Let's go get them. Welcome to combat. Oh yeah, you can hail them and sort of find out like, hey, do they want to fight? Because sometimes the answer is no, and then you can have a <coughs> peaceful resolution. Sorry. Of course, that's what we all want deep down. Uh, let's launch a missile at them and see what happens. Boom! So 18 hit points on this guy. 20 on the five ships thither, and our beam range is four, so. There's also a lot of flanking you need to consider. Perfect. All of your weapons have a really good arc. Okay, we picked off one of those ships. That's a that's a win. So you can see, even though, yeah, honestly, our odds of getting around that thing's defenses are not great. Sweet, and I'm actually gonna try to withdraw to see if I can save. Save that thing. We'll run a little interference. Maybe they won't be able to get around them. Sweet. Line of sight can be blocked by these rocks. Assume it's just like on the Z plane, it's just a massive vertical stack of asteroids. It makes it look more round than it really is, that thing. Kilometer across, 25,000 kilometers tall. Why do you chase death, young fool? So our low damage rolls are largely because of just terrible accuracy on our weapons. We have like the intro level battle computer, which is what determines your accuracy. I don't know if you briefly saw that thing was flashing red, not the reflection. Boom, no losses. All right. No, we don't, oh shoot. All right, so I was stimulating the economy here. I was a, uh, my, my socialist policies backfired. Well, we're clamping down now. We're here to grow the budget. You actually collect interest, which is quite helpful. All right, we're generating research points now. So this lovely, um, yeah, she's a scientist. All right, we've got the red streak of hair. All right, I'm actually legitimately gonna send a message to to Jeff, the, the lead dev on this. Um, I know it looks like this requires 7,460 research points, but uh, you know, just imagine there's a little bit more space there. Maybe a different font size. Um, so terraforming, just more population. Colonized barren planets, uh, that might factor in. And improved eco-restoration is a tech from Orion 1, where your factories are generating most of your production. Citizens generate a little bit without factories, and with factory automation, factories can generate a little without citizens. Everyone could be dead and the colony still contributes. But those factories pollute. This makes it cheaper and cheaper one, to eliminate that pollution. One of the things I really like about Master of Ryan 1 is the universality of the BC unit. One billion credits. 
is like that's a unit of research and a unit of industry and a unit of everything of money so how much is something worth it's it all translates in a one to one to one to one to one ratio i'm gonna grab barren colonization but we'll probably jump on that one second this is tempting Oh mod. These are all kind of expensive. By 19%. So we could industrialize planets faster. Um, and if you want to like research new stuff on the tech tree, you grab a theoretical one. Which at first I wasn't sure about this because it seemed like an extra step, but actually I think it's really good because if you're farming for like a certain type of tech, like if you really want propulsion, you can really go after just researching theoretical stuff over and over and over and, you know, search faster rather than always going after the most expensive tech to raise your tech level. Yeah. Yeah, we'll grab automated factories. 52 research points, sign me up. Uh, nuclear engines, I mean, it's hard to argue with that. We'll get more immediate benefit out of logistics range though. Mega missiles. And better accuracy. All right, a bunch of new low level missiles. So I'm just looking at the tonnage. I mean, it's going to be hard to argue with the proton gun. Let's live a little. Let, you know what? Let's check out these diverted energy missiles. Right now we're shooting nukes, which do not do a ton of damage. All right, a turn has passed. Cool, we can send four people, four million. The official unit of population is Kajillions. Yeah, we already got class one deflector shield. Uh, I'm gonna go theoretical just so we can get some variety maybe. So our maintenance costs, or this percentage is like uh, our maintenance for our empire basically. All right, new colony. This is a list of all the planets with spaceports. Cool, all right, let's jump ahead. I generally shirk ECM systems. Sometimes you get burned on that, but so it goes. All right, now we wait. Uh, I mean, okay, we could get more population right away. It's so cheap. And we're not industrializing Earth because we're basically waiting for the population to expand. Wait, that got us more range. Looks like they're back in exploration range everybody I was about to say it looks like meat's back on the menu boys all right so to expand our range we have to build a spaceport here which i suppose makes sense or sorry a starport we're gonna wait till it's a bit more industrialized though Yeah, let's branch up. So the interceptor hall mod is like a system you can put on the ship. 
get it. I want all of those. The VACA system. Okay, we are working on that. Wait, we already got it. We'll send 20. That's a good start. Under advanced, you can say don't overbuild so it'll shun uh, resources to other stuff. Because we can terraform our plants, you can see terraforming has been added to the list. So that's pretty cool. Uh, under settings, you can set like don't overbuild as well. All right, new stuff. Got us temporal compressor. It's a system to improve ship initiative. More turns in battle. You know, it's so expensive, but I'm actually gonna grab it as a long-term project for a weird reason. It's gonna bump up. Great work, Uthar, or Ulthar. All right, let's get serious about this. You know what, you're not ready for that. <laughs> okay. We're still making new colonies. We're doing okay. About to explore new territory. And, I mean, it's hard to justify investing too much in Zengara, but We don't have great options right now. Must be a pretty tiny planet if it's, I guess it's just dry where there is land. Anyway, I really like the exploration system. Wow, a star with nothing. Nothing more than a node in space to me. Oh, hey! Nerg. Yeah, I accept your proposed ceasefire on the grounds that you have better ships than I do. Alright, might as well have everyone reconvene. Uh, maybe we get more serious about colonizing these bad planets just to stick a flag in them, basically. I also regret not sending more people to Harkon, but I kind of do want the population to rebound on Earth at some point. Great. Yeah, there's nothing really we can do. Except wait for that uh, starport to finish. Which probably requires that we start it. Again, they minimize the micromanagement in this game. And I'm still finding ways to not do it. I hate micromanagement. If you're new to me, oh heck yeah. That can be the first thing you learn. We got a lot of text at this level. Huge increase in cost as well. That heavy ion cannon, it's tempting to me. They also, in this one, figured out that heavy weapons, like in Master of Orion 2, heavy weapons gave you 50% more damage, double the range, half the range dissipation penalty, which is not the same way of saying the same thing, and only doubled the size. It's great value. In this one, they triple the size. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a good, it's a, it's a tough choice again.
So mass drivers are cool because they have, and proton guns are cool because they have the effectiveness of shields, which you know reduce your damage. I mean, it's it's hard not to chase this though. We have really bad tech in lots of other branches, but my goodness, our weapons are gonna be amazing. Okay, so this is a really good, really good scanner. Or we could have better accuracy on our ships. I'll take it. Our research total is still not great. These bars, by the way, unlike Master of Ryan 1. Oh, because it doesn't want to overbuild. Okay. Uh, they're all relative to one another. It's not like there's 100% and these each are a little slice of it. Boy, that factory cost is prohibitive. And how's Seoul's population? All right. Still not impressive. We're gonna limit. Wow, shift increments of 50, dang. We'll get a little bit of the production diverted to missile bases, I think. Whoa, someone just forked out a ton of knowledge to someone I don't know. All right, factory construction three, tempting. Duraloy armor, even more tempting. Um, we could have that relatively quickly. I'm tempted. I mean, we aren't. The fact is, we aren't weaponizing stuff right now. It's triple the cost. We'd probably hit it anyway. Okay, we'll grab Duraloy first. Because getting more hit points on your ships is no joke. I take my metallurgy very seriously. All right, we got a spaceport, everybody. <laughs> Can reach two more ship or two more locations because of it. Um, don't really know where I am in the map, which is important. You can make a lot of strategic decisions if you know, but it looks like the traffic is coming from over there. Honestly. I want to get a starport down here. Yeah, if we could make that happen. Yeah, I mean, this place is not... It needs a little kick, let's just put it that way. <laughs> Even three would go a long way. We're just gonna have them. This is so I can ignore them, basically. They'll shunt a little bit of their production over there. Great work. Kalis has arrived. They got range. 
All right, the ship that's going to scout there can take care of the next one. I'm excited about that yellow planet, though. Or that yellow star. I think that's a type G. From hottest to coldest stars. Classes go O, B, A, F, G, K, M, L. Acronym. O, oh, be a fine girl, kiss my lips. Mnemonic? I don't know, whatever. Okay, this is a really interesting dilemma. We have... I think the biggest need is for range. And this isn't that big of an upgrade. This would be a good hyperspeed upgrade. Oh man, and then combat maneuverability. And defense. Let's grab the range. I mean, our research points are up to 400, like, not bad. Gertub, I'll colonize you, oh, like crazy. All right, good bit of colonizing. It's generally good to spread out that population loss. Why? Because we gotta. No, um, that's three different population centers that are recovering their population rather than having like a couple that are at their cap and not growing anymore. So are these space pirates? All right, you know what? We're just gonna end this episode here and the next one will carry on with our expansion. And uh, who knows? Who knows what awaits us, but I'm enjoying it. I'll see you in the next episode, everyone.